All right, this is relations between distributed load, shear, and moment. So let's say we had a simply supported beam. with a distributed load that looks something like this. And we wanted to look at some distance delta x located x down the beam. So let's blow up our little delta x and draw its free body diagram. So we would have a shear on both sides in the positive direction. And on the side we have v plus delta v. This is delta x. We'd have our positive moment. And then we'd have our positive moment plus the change in moment. Okay, let's call this point O right here. And then additionally, we'd have our distributed load look something like that, such that F right here, delta F, would be equal to W of X times delta X. And this distance right here would be k times delta x. Okay, so now we have our free body diagram of the delta x segment. So if we sum the forces in the y direction, we would get uh, v minus v plus delta v plus delta F, which is W of X times delta X. Such that the V's would cancel, and we get that delta V is equal to W X delta X. Di divide delta X by both sides, and we get delta V divided by delta X is equal to W of X, or our distributed load function. And now if we want to take d um, delta X to zero, this would become a differential, so dv dx is equal to wx. And what this tells us is that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the distributed load intensity. And now, if we were to um, take this to both sides, it would be, um, we'd get to dv is equal to wx dx, and we would take the integral of both sides such that we would get delta v is equal to the integral of wx dx. And what this tells us is that the change in shear is equal to the area under the loading curve. Okay. So now let's sum the moments about point O. So we can get a relationship for point O. So, or for the moments. Sum of the moments about point O is equal to zero. Which is equal to We've got M plus M going in the counterclockwise direction. We've got M going in the clockwise, so minus M. We've got V times its moment arm of delta X is going to make it go clockwise, so that's negative V delta X. And then we also have delta F. So delta F is also going to cause it to go clockwise, so that's W of X times delta X times its molen arm of k delta x. The m's would cancel 
and we'd get delta m is equal to v delta x plus w x k delta x squared. So when you're looking at this, um, we know that we're going to take delta x equal to zero, right? As that goes to zero, this entire term is going to go to zero because you've got delta x squared. So as soon as you square an infinitesimally small delta x, it becomes so small that it's totally insignificant. So this would be able to get us to dm dx is equal to v, such that the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. Same thing up here, that would make delta m equal to the integral of v dx, such that the change in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. And so something to note is that these equations that we just came up with, delta v is equal to the integral of w of x dx, and delta m is equal to the integral of v dx, do not apply where a concentrated force or couple moment acts. These create discontinuities. These cases create discontinuities. So if you have a concentrated force or a couple moment, you can no longer use that the um, change in the moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram.